Hey y'all, it is your girl Maya back with another video. I'm so excited to be sitting down with y'all and having a little girl chat. I remember back in the day I used to do girl chats all the time and now we're doing like mommy chats so it's really a full circle moment. Today I want to tell you the 10 things I wish I knew before having babies. I really hope this is helpful to somebody out there who's expecting or maybe you're a first time mom or maybe you were just curious. I hope these tips and information can give you a little bit more insights on mommyhood. If you're new to my channel make sure to hit the subscribe button like comment share we have so much stuff here on this channel for y'all so i hope you guys enjoy and if you're interested in 10 things i wish i knew before having a baby keep on watching gotta keep the focus in my own lane in my own way Coming in at number one, one of the biggest things that I've learned along this journey is that experience is the teacher. Just to give you a little backstory, my oldest is 19 months and then my son is four months old. So I have two under two. And when I was pregnant with my first, my immediate instinct was just to research, research, research and try to like read my way into motherhood when like the only way to really be in motherhood is to experience it. And I think it was great that I was trying to get all of this knowledge and gain understanding, but there are certain things that you won't learn until you've literally gone through the fire so don't overwhelm yourself girl it can I know you're tempted to overwhelm yourself and I feel like when I did do that I just got so much anxiety because all I heard was all of these like horror stories of motherhood and how I was like gonna be leaving my life behind and I'm starting a whole new chapter and it was just so much anxiety so of course research but also be wise in your research and if you feel like you're just getting overwhelmed and just getting filled with anxiety then take a deep breath breathe in breathe out girl and know that you're going to be the best mom you can be and you just have to experience it you have to go through the fire in order for you to learn next up I really wish somebody would have told me this because I thought I was crazy when I experienced this and it is that it takes time for you to bond with your baby now social media will tell you as soon as that baby pops out it's just like oh my gosh like I'm so in love like this is my baby like ah, all this magic and fairies and butterflies and dust no I know that with my first it took like a full month for me to even first wrap my head around what just happened like I literally just pushed a human being out of my body this baby was in me for nine months now she's not in me anymore and it was like it, there was just so much happening where I just felt disassociated from reality in general so then mom guilt kicked in because I'm like why don't I have this extreme bond with my baby yet like what is going on and just all of these thoughts were just flooding my mind but it just took some time y'all it just took some time for me to know my baby for my baby to know me and we have the strongest bond now but I I think that's a reality that not a lot of people talk about or maybe they're shameful about but it needs to be talked about because when you experience it you feel alone girl you're not alone now of course we all want to have that super strong bond with our babies but sometimes it just takes time next up I want to talk about something that we all need to hear even pertaining beyond parenthood and that is overconsumption is real especially when it comes to baby products. Oh my goodness, the ads that will be thrown at you, the marketing that will just be shoved down your throat, it's crazy. People will make you feel like you need to literally go into debt to have this baby, when in reality, those first couple months, your baby needs a safe place to sleep, food, whether that be you breastfeeding or whether that be you formula feeding, clothes, diapers and wipes like <laughs> I know there's so many extra things that can help assist like make the journey and the transition easier but like those are the bare essentials your baby needs now me I'm extra and I really need to hear this because I can be an over consumer in a lot of areas but I remember when I was doing a clean out of like all the bottles and just all the little knickknack stuff from my first when I was pregnant with my son y'all I literally threw away a whole trash bag of stuff because I had just bought every bottle on the market every pacifier on the market all of these eating tools even though she wasn't even old enough to eat at the time I was just buying so much stuff because I honestly it was out of fear I was just like I, I need to get this because if she needs it then I'll have it and if she needs it and I don't have it like what's gonna happen take a deep breath girl 
<laughs> take a deep breath. If your baby really needs it, then you can buy it in that moment. I feel like stocking up on so much stuff that you may not even use is crazy. And in the end, it's just gonna lead to you spending a ridiculous amount of money and having to either store all of those items or just give them away. So get the essentials when they're a newborn, learn your baby, and then buy from there. Don't feel so overwhelmed and pressured to buy everything all at once. So speaking on newbornhood, because I know that can be a really challenging time for a lot of moms, especially first time moms. Like I'm just trying to think back and get into that mindset when I was a first time mom and all I can really remember is just like anxiety and just fear of what's to come. And now being on the other side of that, I wish I could just give her a hug because she needed a hug, you know? She needed a hug and she needed somebody to tell her like, you're gonna be a good mom. I know you have no idea what you're doing, but you're gonna learn and it's okay to make mistakes. And I think every first time mom needs to know that. This is kind of going into one of my other tips, but it is okay to make mistakes, girl. And I wish somebody would have told me that. It's okay to make mistakes it's okay to not know and it's okay to learn as you go like we're all here doing the best we can mom guilt is real um, mom guilt can consume you if you allow it to but you also have to have a strong understanding and knowledge of who you are as a woman aside from being a mom who are you as a woman? You are a strong woman. You are a beautiful woman. You are a woman with gifts and talents and you're also a mom. So don't allow motherhood to tear you down as a person. Don't allow the mistakes you make in motherhood to make you look at yourself and now you're questioning who you are as a woman. We're all gonna make mistakes on this journey but you are still valuable and you are still needed, girl. We need you, we need you. Your family needs you, we all need you. So it's okay to make mistakes. You're gonna learn as you go. The next thing I wanna talk about is newborn schedules. There is no newborn schedule. <laughs> I wish somebody would have told me that there is no newborn schedule, especially that first month. I feel like for me, the first month is always just like survival month. Like, I may shower today, I may not, I may eat, I may not. Like I'm literally just trying to make it through the day. And I feel like that first month is very trying, but it gets easier. It genuinely does get easier. And that time is going to pass. But I know for me, like I'm a control freak. I wanna know a schedule, like I wanna know what's going on. And the hardest thing about that first month of having a newborn is there literally is no schedule. They eat when they want. They can cluster feed and eat every 15 minutes, or maybe they'll eat every two hours. Maybe they'll eat every three hours. Maybe they'll sleep for, six hours throughout the day and be up all night like you literally have no idea and that's okay my advice though that when you get out of that first month of newbornhood try to start establishing distinct nap routines so when my son would go down for a nap i would close the curtains we had blackout curtains i would put on white noise so he would know that okay when it's dark, when the atmosphere is like this, it's time to go to sleep. And then during the day, I would have the TV on blasting, I'm vacuuming, lights are up. So it would just, he would know like, okay, this is daytime and then this is nap time and this is night time. So I tried to establish that nap routine about at two months. Of course, it was never consistent. He's just now starting to get consistent with his naps. He's just now sleeping throughout the night and he is four months old, y'all. So don't put the pressure on yourself or your baby to adhere to this perfect schedule when they literally are just in a whole new world. Like they are in a whole new world. They have no idea what's going on. So just be patient. I know it can be a little bit frustrating. I know the days feel super, super short and the nights feel very long, but you're going to get through that phase and it gets easier. Next up, we're gonna talk a little bit about postpartum and just my take on postpartum. I wish somebody would have told me that that postpartum is different for every single woman. Some women do experience postpartum depression, postpartum anxiety. Some people do experience extreme weight gain or weight loss. Some women do experience hormonal, I mean, every woman does experience hormonal imbalances to some degree, but I've heard a lot of postpartum stories that have quite literally 
terrified me. And that story is extremely valid. Whatever you went through is valid. But I've also literally been scared to death when I was pregnant because I'm like, I really hope I don't experience this postpartum. I would say with my first, we definitely had a little bit of a rocky road. I experienced a little bit of postpartum depression, but nothing to the degree that I was shown through social media. And then with my son, praise God, I did not even experience it a little bit. And I think it's because I really had community and support around me. So my biggest thing when it comes to postpartum is reach out for the help. Whether that's physical help, people coming to help you, whether that's you in a group chat with other moms who just had babies and you guys can just hash out how you're feeling, like get the support. Motherhood really does take a village and all of our villages may look different. Some village may be a house full of people. Another village may be people that you can talk to online, but find that support somewhere because it's definitely super needed, especially during that first few months of postpartum. But I also want to talk a little bit just about the physical aspect of postpartum. That's also different for every woman, right? Some women heal very fast and they're good to go and they're just up at it, running around the house because everybody gives birth in a different way. Some women may do natural, some women may be induced and get an epidural, some women may have a C-section. Like, There's so many different factors that determine your postpartum recovery. But for me, what I found is that um, it, it was rough. It was definitely rough for me. Again, I'm a person where I'm like, oh no, like I'm cool, like I can do this and I'm gonna be right back to it and everything's gonna be good. Postpartum sat my butt down for the first month. Like, woo wee. With my first, I don't think it was, I mean, it was obviously still painful, but I feel like I healed faster. With my son though, and having my kids so close together, my body just took like a hit. I think I bled for about four weeks. And no, I think it was more close to five weeks because I was wearing pads for five weeks total. Those first couple weeks, I was bleeding pretty heavy. Um, and then it kind of subsided, you know, as the weeks went on. I'll tell you the first bowel movement you have postpartum. <laughs> I literally, literally was like terrified. But I will say when it comes to that, use Colace. Make sure you have Colace in your postpartum recovery kit. It is a stool softener and it's gonna help you to use the bathroom in as least amount of pain as possible. I used Colace for the first month of postpartum because I feel like every time I went, it was still a little bit difficult. And something interesting that happened with my son is the swelling was so much worse than with my daughter. And again, I think that's just having two kids so close together. But something that helped me with like the swelling and the achiness, cause there was so much achiness that came with that, is using cooling pads. So I'm pretty sure Mom Frida has these cooling pads. I think that's the brand that I use. They're these like basically big, I think they're called padsicles and it's a huge pad and then you can break it and it turns into like an ice pack. It sticks in your underwear. The only thing is they only last like 45 minutes. You only feel like a cooling effect for 45 minutes and then your body heat obviously just makes it go away. I would stack up on those for sure because anything that can just help to reduce swelling and achiness is gonna be super helpful. Another thing a lot of people don't talk about is the postpartum cramps or the breastfeeding cramps. If you're breastfeeding, you're gonna experience these excruciating and I'm not trying to scare you, I'm just trying to be real because I know people want the tea. Like everybody tries to sugarcoat it, but I'm just here to tell you what it is. So you're gonna experience these really, 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 really painful cramps. Mine lasted for the for first five days. Um, they would come sometimes when I was breastfeeding, sometimes when I was just randomly sitting down and they would quite literally like take my breath away. And basically what it is, is your uterus expanded so much during pregnancy and now it is shrinking back at a rapid rate. And with that comes these just horrible cramps. I have seen some supplements that some women have um, recommended. I've personally never used those, but if you wanna do your own research, I'm pretty sure there's one called Cramp Ease from um, Nature's Mama or Mama's Bliss. It's one of those. I'll link it in the description for you. You guys do your own research. But I have heard a lot of women talk about how this has significantly reduced their postpartum cramps. But other than like the swelling, the bleeding, the back pain, the back pain, the back pain is one, y'all. Yeah. Um, For me, it took me about, I think, two to three days to really be able to stand up straight and walk. For those first like few days, I was like hunched over. 
you know, could barely like make it to the kitchen. But after that, I was able to like stand up and walk. Something that helped me with that is getting one of those postpartum bands. Now, I never use a postpartum band to shrink myself because that's just not realistic. And I feel like people who advertise that, it just, I don't know. To me, it just doesn't make sense. Like your body needs time to actually heal before it'll shrink. But what the postpartum band did is help to support my back, which I really did need in that time because my abs just felt like I had absolutely no muscle. There was no core strength there. My pelvic floor was just absolutely destroyed. So having anything to support that was um, definitely necessary during those first few days of postpartum. But y'all, you're gonna go through a lot those first couple weeks but I want you to know it is going to get better. And I have such a quick memory with this because in the moment I was just like, this is the most pain I've ever been in in my entire life. I'm never having another kid. And then you forget about it. You literally forget about it like four months later and you're like, oh, like I can have another kid. And that just goes to show like being a mom, the things that we go through, we would do it again just to have that feeling of holding our baby for the first time. Like it is such a special, special feeling. And like we really do earn our stripes in motherhood, y'all, simply by pushing a baby out into this world because your body goes through a lot. But in the end, it's all worth it to have our babies. So going along with the postpartum theme that we're on right now, I want to talk about doing the do um postpartum and how that whole thing works <laughs> this is definitely a tmi girl chat so we're just gonna get into all the details here like i said some people like to sugarcoat it i'm just gonna give it to you as it is so doing the do as a married couple thank you six weeks postpartum um for me six weeks was a wild number because by six weeks i'm just now being able to shower consistently so it's just like i that was the last thing on my mind you know um but some women they're, they're ready to you know they're ready to go back um it took a lot longer for me to heal and to even be in the mental space to even do that you know um i mean your body does go through just a lot when you give birth and just the thought of that for me it wasn't until about 12 weeks i'm gonna be honest so my biggest thing I wish somebody would have told me is to take your time when it comes to doing the do postpartum. Don't feel the pressure to have to just go back to who you were and just act like everything's okay. Like your body has gone through a lot and it is okay for you to take your time and you just have to voice that to your partner. And then the first couple times that you do do it, expect a little bit of discomfort. If you're in actual pain, stop. You're not ready. Your body is not healed. But you'll know that you're kind of healed up when it's just a little bit of discomfort. Um, but there's no actual sharp pains. If there's ever any sharp pains, you're not ready. Like I said, just cut it out, girl, heal up. After that, things do get better, things do get easier. I will say that when you are breastfeeding, you are actually drier down there. There's a lot of things going on, your body is using up a lot of nutrients and you're actually drier down there. So make sure to be using like some lubricants and stuff like that to help you because it definitely is, it's different when you're actually breastfeeding. So keep that in mind as well. Okay, so next up I wanna talk about newborn boys specifically. Nobody told me anything about the circumcision process, so I'm gonna let you know how it goes. I think it was day two. They took my son to go get his procedure. It was like a 30 minute procedure. They monitor him for an extra 30 minutes after. They brought him back to me, he was sleeping. They said that he slept throughout the whole process and everything was smooth. But I feel like I was in more pain than he was because seeing him just like, especially when it came to diaper changes, they are so fragile already as newborns. And for them to have like this wound, you know, that you have to care for, I, it was just, it was scary, y'all. I was honestly very scared. But they give you like some gauzes and then you're supposed to apply some type of like Vaseline. I think we were using Vaseline just to separate, you know, the, the gauze from um, the diaper so it wasn't getting stuck on there. But I think the healing process was about 10 days. Um, after 10 days, it looked so much better down there, but it was like very red and raw at first and it looked like it hurt so bad. And I'm like, I know these people are telling me it doesn't hurt, but I'm looking at my son and this looks like it hurts. But again, it heals, it heals and things get better with time. 
that first month there's so much happening it's a new world for you it's a new world for your baby so i wish somebody would have just told me that it's normal it's normal for it to look like that um, when a baby boy gets circumcised and that it does heal, <laughs> it does heal. And the last thing I wish somebody would have let me know before I had a baby, things are constantly changing and that is okay. Right when I got done with the newborn stage, here comes the four month sleep regression. Here comes, you know, his bowel movements changing because my breast milk composition is changing. He's now trying to crawl. He's now drooling all over the place. He's now grabbing things. After the four months, we've got six months. It's time to eat. It's time to start um, purees. It's, it's time for the baby to actually crawl. And now he's trying to walk. And now he's trying to stand up. And it's just like a constant, constant change. Be present in the moments. I am somebody who was always looking for the next thing. I gotta focus on the next thing. I have to prepare for him because he's gonna start eating foods next month. Okay, now I have to prepare for him because he's gonna start walking. Okay, now I have to baby proof the house. And I, especially with my first, was so concerned with what's to come that I didn't fully soak in the present moment. The fact that you have a beautiful baby that you brought into this world is special enough. Be present in that moment. The moments in the future will come. Even the Lord says, do not worry about tomorrow for tomorrow will worry about itself. There's something about being in the moment, especially when it comes to having kids because the time does go fast. I look at my daughter and I'm just like, you were literally the size of your brother yesterday. How are you walking and talking to me right now? It's crazy y'all, but it's a beautiful thing. And my number one piece of advice is just enjoy the journey, girl. All the highs and the lows and that you are doing a good job. And before we end this video, I just wanna pray for you because I don't know if you're a mom. I don't know if you're thinking about being a mom. I just wanna pray over you and your journey of motherhood because God got me through it all, y'all. He really got me through it all. So Father God, I just lift up my sister on the other side of this screen. I just pray over her journey as a mother. Father God, I ask that you be with her through every step, through every stage, that your hand is on her children, that your hand is on her mind. When she starts to doubt herself, when she starts to second guess if she's capable, Father God, you will put your affirmations in your words in her telling her that she is actually more than a conqueror telling her that she can actually do all things through Christ Jesus father God telling her that she is the head and not the tail Lord so I speak over her life I speak over her light I speak over her joy that joy will come in the morning she may be in a season where she's in a dark place but I speak her joy coming back Lord I speak her joy coming back I want to come up against the spirit of fear the spirit of anxiety that may be within her thinking about what's to come give her your supernatural peace father god give her your supernatural peace lord peace that she's going to be capable peace that she's able to do the journey peace that you will put in her the tools necessary to be a good mother and when the world tries to tell her she's not help her to look to you for affirmation that she is that she was called for a time such as this that she is equipped to be a mom lord i thank you for her life lord i thank you for the impact she's gonna have on her children how she's gonna raise up her children to be amazing people Lord how she's going to steward this gift of being a mother and Lord I just pray over her family that you are with them and that your spirit dwells in their home and that is in Jesus mighty name amen girl you know i had to go bible it was all cute doing the whole thing but at the end of the day like god is the reason i was able to get through this journey of motherhood there's a lot that comes at you, but having the Lord by my side just gave me an unexplainable peace day after day after day. So wherever you are on your journey of motherhood, I'm praying that the Lord is in that space with you. I love you, girl. I hope this video helped you out. If you want more like this, please make sure to let me know because I love filming these videos for y'all. But I appreciate you, girl, and I will see you next time. Bye.